You are right, guys, and welcome to the latest episode of Muscle Owl Talks. Uh, I'm here with the wonderful Hannah Sawyer, and we're joined by Alyssa, who was, well, she was on telling us about Chaco Mary 2 last time around, and, uh, well, we were going to discuss uh, physical assistive devices. Is that how we'd refer to them? Yes. Brilliant. And yeah, I guess, Alyssa, do you want to start us off with, you know, what's, what, what's your experience with these and, uh, you know, what's your, what's your view on everything? So I used a walker. I still use it in some situations, but I mostly um, got around using a walker as an assistive walking device for uh, two or three years. So that's kind of where I'm speaking from. I think there is an element about you know, prioritizing being able to walk, there are some concern that, um, well, if you don't keep walking, then you're going to get worse. Um, But I think that it's strange that assistive devices aren't seen more as a tool for the person who's using them to be able to go through their daily life. And there's a balance between, you know, or everyone has a different idea of how much um, they are willing to uh, sacrifice in order to walk. And so me trying to push someone towards one option or the other, because that's what you believe is the right thing for them without really understanding what kind of help they need to get through their daily life is just pretty uh, frustrating. You know, you can give the person the information that, you know, the more that they can walk and and the more activity that they can do that might mitigate some of the risks of 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 their injury or disorder progressing but you know it's it's a tool yeah no absolutely absolutely i think that i don't know i see this a lot with my grandpa like i don't think it's just a disability issue i think that it's um all people, you know, and I think especially like people as they age, things get harder for them. And I think that there's such this reluctance in our society to admit that we're aging or to admit that like our bodies are failing or failing isn't the right word, right? Because like that's what they're supposed to be doing. So Changing. they're just right, right, exactly. So like there's such this reluctance to admit that and then to allow ourselves to use the tools, as Alyssa said, that help us throughout our everyday lives. And so my grandpa, he, well, I don't really know. He has some foot issues and he, he can't really like be on his feet for a very long time. And so he has sort of like a little scooter, but it's like a knee scooter. So basically it has like a little seat for his knee and he props his one knee on that and then it has wheels so then he can like roll himself along and he can walk he can walk short distances but if he's going to go a longer distance where he can't sit down then he takes his little knee scooter Mm -hmm. so again like even that that example if he did not have his knee scooter, then, you know, he likely would be much more limited. And I think that's the thing, right? Like we think that these things such as wheelchairs are, or walkers or knee scooters are limiting when actually they're doing the yes. opposite. And I yes. think I'm, I'm going to bring this up because this popped up on my Facebook memories um, a while ago, like a couple years ago, or maybe it was last year, I don't know, there was that whole thing with one of the, I don't know, it was one of the Kardashians or one of the Jenners who like did a photo shoot yeah. of herself in a wheelchair yeah. and her whole, her and like a choker around which like I'm wearing a choker, so it's perfect. <laughs> but it was this whole like, oh, look at how much the industry, like, confines me or, like, boxes me in, right? And then people were like, no, hang on a second. Like, wheelchairs are what allow us to get out, like, to do our daily things and to live. 
And so like, that's very ableist for you to say that, yeah. And it was interesting also because there was such a varied response from the disability community. Like I know some people that were upset with her, like upset with her doing that photo shoot because they were like, well, she has no idea what it's like to be in a wheelchair. And I was like, I don't really give a, I'm going to rephrase that Mm -hmm. because this is going to go online. Um, I was like, I don't really care. Like, yeah, no, she doesn't have any idea, but that's not the issue. The issue is she's perpetuating this idea that wheelchairs are restrictive and limiting and they're not. That's fascinating because, well, yeah, you know, I've, it's been a long time since I've thought about any of that sort of, those sorts of ideas, because I think that when you, yeah, that's not the nature of it, is it? It has to be from such, from such a mind and a perception that doesn't really know anything about wheelchairs or assistive devices that would have those ideas. Yeah. So in terms of you were talking about negative stigmas of such devices, do you see it as kind of a twofold, a, a kind of, uh, I don't know, you didn't say about your grandparents whether they were reluctant in using them or not, or not. but I kind of feel like, is there a stigma, is that two part? Is there a stigma from sometimes people using them and not wanting to use them at first? And maybe the stigma from society in terms of how society sees them and views them. Well, I think that, like, the reluctance for people to use them is fed by society's stigma, right? And I think that it all comes... Well, maybe then the people's reluctance feeds society's stigma. Oh, for sure, absolutely. I think it's all related. And I think that it all comes back to this idea... And I feel like I'm going to say this now in every single episode that we do, but it's this idea of like the ideal body, right? Like the body that works a certain way. And so when a body is different from that, then then we just don't even want to think about it. We're not going to acknowledge it. We're not going to figure out how to make that body work or like go about its daily life. I don't know. Alyssa, I'm fascinated in terms of, I I don't know if you use a wheelchair or if you have used a wheelchair at times, but in terms of when you use a a walker, do you notice society views that differently to wheelchairs or that that kind of thing? And and how do you see that? Um, Well, that's kind of an interesting question. Um, I think that people kind of have this idea where someone's either disabled or they're not disabled and there can't really be anything in between. So I've had a lot more comments saying things like, or, you know, asking what's uh, wrong with me or comments about you're too young for blank um, when I've been using a walker versus a wheelchair and I don't really notice this actually but I've been told um, when I use a walker that people walking by will glare at me wow. <laughs> when I'm not looking. Glare at you! <laughs> uh, because from my position um, I grew up with my brother Andrew and he was four years younger than me so obviously diagnosed at four I was eight and so I was still a child through his progression the progression the sharp progression of his condition to you know Duchenne muscular dystrophy using a wheelchair all of the time from the age of 11 onwards some of the time from eight or nine onwards and there's that period with young boys who have Duchenne muscular dystrophy of being seven or eight or nine or 10, when it becomes very noticeable, but they can still walk. And so they will b- walk, but it's, and obviously my brother Andrew never used a walker or anything, but it, I, I would notice as a child, society's perception of him was one thing when he was nine and 10 and maybe not using a wheelchair. And then because it was visible, um, but he, there was no wheelchair in sight. So it was that not disabled but not not disabled thing that you were talking about and then it was it was something very different when he was 11 and then using a wheelchair and and I noticed that as a child I noticed 
there would be a lot more people looking or a lot more people at that age, which I felt very uncomfortable about feeling sorry for him, visibly feeling sorry, like, ah, oh, you know, but when it was, when, when he was using his wheelchair, in some ways, it was a relief, you know, for me, and I think a bit for him, because there was that. It was such a weird stigma. I also feel like the reason is, like, when someone is in a wheelchair, like, society, people that aren't in a wheelchair can easily, like, put them in a category of disabled, and, like, obviously our society thrives on categories, and also um, that way they can, like, put them in the category and then shove them out of the way and say, okay, that is not me. That is not related to me. I'm never going to be that way, you know? So it's sort of like a, I don't know, like a way to just like box that reality, I feel like. Whereas if someone is still able to walk, but maybe walk differently, or you're able to tell that it's more difficult for them, that is still too similar to the able-bodied person's experience that they don't know what to do with it. Yeah. In fact, let me just jump in there to say that I saw, I, I, I definitely agree with that. And I think that it was that sort of like when Andrew used a wheelchair from the age of 11 onwards, maybe he would still get people looking and everything else in the same way, but there was no kind of quizzical kind of, Oh wait, what's the matter? It was maybe it was as if people just didn't care because they could, okay, box it as okay. Wheelchair user, someone with a disability in that way. And maybe it was their brains that before that point actually wanting to know. And yeah, I never thought of it like that before. I would also add that, I mean, the way, well, it's not really adding, it's kind of the same thing, but the way that um, people respond to learning about my disorder or various things that I say about, oh, I can't stand very long or I have knee pain, it completely depends on whether or not I'm visibly disabled or not. And Mm. Or I guess that's probably not a good way to say it, if I'm using an assistive walking device or not. And that includes doctors. Mm. And I can say whatever I want about, like, how much I walk and and everything. Um, And when I haven't used an assistive walking device, um, I'm a lot more likely to be treated like I'm just, like, weaker or to be made fun of. Wow. or to uh, for people to say that I'm lazy or act like I'm lazy. And then in the context of the t- discussion, like the, like the extent to which you need to conform mm-hmm. is completely ridiculous. Like you can't even be a little bit different at all. Mm-hmm. And um, I feel like even people who don't have a disorder, if they're out of shape, they're you know kind of made to feel ashamed of it and i don't i just kind of lost my train of thought (laughs) (laughs) i'll just say i i I think that was that's fascinating and i think that that's you have this fascinating viewpoint as well because you kind of see things from both spectrums and both angles and it really hits on something i don't think is talked about or even uh understood enough in our society that it, like here's the thing i was at the house of lords a few months back and they were discussing a white paper on disability health and employment and they were talking about young adults with duchenne muscular dystrophy who would have you know very hard time getting into to, into work through the transports you know lots of severe health problems all the things like that And one of the ministers said, oh, no, 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 we would never push someone with that condition into work. And I said, you know, it was almost said as if like, no, 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 that person can just sit in a room in a corner for the rest of their life and don't have to worry. We'll just, you know, but it's the people who maybe can do something. We're going to push them. And I said, it's actually should be the other way around. Yeah. These people with Duchenne muscular dystrophy will often i don't i've never met someone with dmd who who doesn't want to work or doesn't want to have some kind of uh benefit in society but it there there is this sort of split in most people's minds as people who are 
disabled and people who are maybe not quite disabled enough do you, does that does that make any sense well, i'm ahead, just going to say that i don't i think that what people think about those two categories bananas to have categories like that is it's 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 completely wrong anyway please all right i was going to say i was just i was Alyssa, when you were talking i was thinking about the time when you and i went to olive garden together yeah and so okay so Alyssa and i went to olive garden this is like our favorite place it was for a short time um <laughs> short time sounds like you're falling out we're, we're over Olive Garden at this point. You banned. But you banned from Olive Garden. <laughs> There's places of the two of you up there. Do not let these mm-hmm. people in. Yeah, so we got there and, um, well, I don't know. Do you want to tell the story, Alyssa? You're so excited about telling it. Okay, about. well, it's just so interesting because I never thought, like, when you and I are together, like, there's someone who is very clearly, obviously, physically disabled. And then there's someone who sometimes is not phys- like clearly physically disabled. And so I think that that was very well illustrated in the time when we went to Olive Garden and there was like a very long wait and there was, it was very full in the waiting area mm-hmm. and there wasn't a space for Alyssa to sit down and she couldn't stand for that long. And so I think my mom went in, or no, did we try explaining? Well, I, I think I talked to them and I was asking if there was any way that they could bring over another chair because I have knee pain. I just said I have knee pain um, that makes And there were plenty of empty chairs that were like in the dining area, like the bar area that they could have gotten. Yeah, wow. and I feel like they said something too. They, I don't even know. I, I probably blocked it out, but um, well, right. They didn't consider like, it for a second. <laughs> yeah, and whereas, like, if I were to go up and be like, "Hey, can someone move so I can like sit here?" People would do it in a, you know, in yeah. a snap. Yeah, mm-hmm. and take a photo of you, and take a photo of them doing oh. it with you. And <laughs> well, but you know. I mean, I'm here yeah. freaking Sawyer. <laughs> yeah, and I thought, and I thought that um, I was still uh, in a stage where I felt like if they weren't going to help me, then there's nothing else I can do. And then your mom just like got the chair and moved it without asking. Oh yeah. <laughs> I like it. Wow, that's fascinating. <sighs> wow, Alyssa, you've opened me up to a whole new perspective of obviously, you know, as as I was saying, I, you know, yeah. It just, I think there really is this spectrum of disability so far wide ranging. And at one point in it, people go, boom, everything from here to there, right, we see you as this. And everything from here to there, we see you as this. And it's really weird. I guess it's not weird for people who are like, you know, here or not weird for people who are here, but people who might sometimes be here and sometimes here, or people who are here, who are here. I'm, I'm losing track of my spectrum here, my imaginary spectrum. But, you know, you, you get the thing. It's, it's, it's a really interesting, you must see both sides of, all, all sides of the coin. Yeah, um, and um, but it's also interesting in the fact that, I mean, I keep pretty close track of how much physical activity I do, and I do have the option of organizing my life so I never have to use an assistive walking device. So I, I could be, like, going outside or going to the store or something, and I could be like, you know what, I don't really feel like dealing with this today, so I'm just not going to use an assistive walking device, and I'm going to be more tired. <laughs> but then you won't get it any concessions given to you because people would just think you're lazy yeah then i'm then i'm on my own and like things could go wrong <laughs> and um or you know and i guess i mean I, I usually have assistive walking device in my car but i guess the extreme situation is i could go somewhere and then i could just have to leave because yeah. i i didn't plan accordingly or i could you know take the assistive walking device um but i probably don't need it and then you know, that could affect my experience. 
Wow. Fascinating. Okay. Wow. This has been, well, one of my most intriguing episodes of Muscle Isle Talks in recent weeks. Hannah, Alyssa, do you want to, do you want to lead us out? Yeah. I mean, just, I think the thing that keeps getting brought up is just that, you know, there shouldn't be this notion around assistive devices that they are bad or that they are limiting because like we have said, you know, they're very actually freeing. And then I think also just that whole disability spectrum is really fascinating. Yeah, I would say that as well, that kind of assistive devices, bloody fantastic in whatever way they're used. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, used or not used, uh, at who are, you know at anyone's wish whenever they want but also then the spectrum that they sort of put someone onto of the you know or the, in someone's visions or in someone's mind i think we all just need to be much more open with how we see all other human beings and the help that we give to other people and someone is not just disabled if they have a wheelchair or wheelchair or no wheelchair <laughs> you know uh, you know th- th- that doesn't make a disabled person you know there are so many different ways people need help and i think we've all just got to be much more vigilant and understanding Alyssa, finish us off what would you say to someone who wanted to use an assistive device but maybe society was or their doctors or whoever was saying no rough it out you can do it what would you say i would say um definitely not to be afraid to try to use an assistive walking device if you need one. You know, it doesn't mean that you have given up. It doesn't say anything about you. It doesn't put any sort of label on whatever you're experiencing. If you want to see if it will help you accomplish certain things and be more independent, or even just to use it sometimes, it's not going to hurt anything to try it. It, it doesn't ha- have to have like any special significance. It's um, just something that can be used to help. And if I hadn't used um, a walker and uh, used it to be able to be more independent, I, you know, I definitely wouldn't be where I am right now. And I don't regret it at all. No, that's amazing. Wow. Alyssa, hopefully you'll join us for many more episodes. Uh, but this has been a fantastic one. Thank you guys for watching, and hopefully we'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye. Bye.